Hi, Life Groups. It is my privilege to be able to share with you as we continue to look together at the book of James. And this book has a number of wonderful practical applications for walking out our faith in our day-to-day lives. So we want to spend a few weeks drawing out some of the really key topics and scriptures that are contained in this great book. And today I want to look at a couple of passages where James talks about what we are to do with our faith. And the first passage is from James 1, verses 22 to 25. I would encourage you to read along in your Bible or in your digital version, otherwise the verses will be on the screen. So James chapter 1, verses 22 to 25 says, Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and, after looking at himself, goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. In a lot of ways, that phrase sums up what the book of James is all about. Don't just hear the word of God. Don't just study the word of God. Don't just read it. Don't just talk about it. Don't just listen to it. Don't just watch Instagram reels about it. Don't just listen to podcasts about it. Don't just analyze it. Don't just discuss it. You have to live it out. You have to walk it out. You have to put into practice the things that you have heard, the words that you have read, the commands that you've been given. In fact, it goes beyond telling us to do that. It says that if we don't put into practice what the word tells us to do, then we are actually deceiving ourselves. We're convincing ourselves of something that isn't true. Just hearing the message and instructions that God has given through his word doesn't gain us anything if we don't then live them out. It doesn't draw us any closer to him. It doesn't achieve anything. Do not merely listen to the word. Do what it says. And in verse 23, we're given the analogy of someone looking into a mirror. And the way this phrase is written implies that the person looking into the mirror is doing so attentively. They're studying all the details. They're giving thorough scrutiny. It's not just a glance in a mirror. The parallel, parallel of this, then, would be someone who listens to or reads the word attentively. The understanding has been gained. The context has been acknowledged. But if the one looking in the mirror then goes away and immediately forgets what they looked like, What was the point of all that study? What was the benefit of all that scrutiny? No, it's saying there is no benefit. But if we listen to and then walk in the word, if we don't forget what we've heard but we do it, then there is a blessing that follows. Last time, Jono spoke about the fact that the author of the book of James is believed to be the younger brother of Jesus. And as I read this passage, I can't help but be reminded of some of my experiences as a child. And I was one of four boys, four brothers. And while we usually got on pretty well with one another, and we were usually very well behaved, well, in in our opinion anyway, I I wouldn't know what mum would say, but there were times when mum and dad would have to remind us of the most appropriate way to behave. They would, on occasion, have to tell us whether what we were doing, the game we were playing, the activity we were partaking in was actually the right thing to be doing at the time. So things like stop that or someone will get hurt or don't throw balls inside the house or it's time to finish playing and get ready for bed. You know, very normal sentences, I would imagine, in many households with multiple children in them. But (laughs) it was absolutely mind-blowingly staggering how often something would go wrong if we continued just one more time after we had been told to stop. That just one more time type behavior so often seemed to end up with that one more time being the time that somebody got hurt 
or that one more time being the time that the drink got knocked over, or that one more time being the time that something got broken. I particularly remember the day before we were going away on our Christmas holiday one year, and the boys were throwing a cricket ball to each other in the living room, as you do. Uh, And when mum came in and saw us, she immediately told us to stop, which we did, after just one more throw, which went straight through the living room window the day before we were supposed to be going on our camping trip. It wasn't that we didn't hear mum. It wasn't that we didn't understand what she said. It wasn't that we didn't think it was a good idea, that we couldn't fathom the reason why she asked us to stop. No, in fact, the only thing that we didn't do was actually the thing we had been asked to do, and that was to stop. Don't just be hearers of the word, but do what it says. It's interesting to note that in the Old Testament, the concepts of hearing and obeying weren't separate ideas at all. In fact, there are numerous times in the Old Testament where the Hebrew word shema has been translated as obey, even though at other times the same word is translated as hear. But this is because the more accurate translation of that word shema would be to have hearing hearts. The word, the concept of the word, calls for people to pay attention, to hear with understanding, and then to have a response. All three ideas are held within the same word. In those passages in the Old Testament, then, asking the people to hear was the same as asking people to obey. And this is what James is restating in these words in these verses. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves, but do what it says. We're going to pause for a moment here to allow you to discuss and consider these few verses in your group. A few questions to help shape your discussion are are these. What hindrances or barriers have you found in your life that have made it difficult to either remember or to live out what we are taught in the Scriptures? What disciplines or strategies have you used to help you remember and to take note of what God is asking of us through the Word? And when have you been aware of the blessing that comes through walking in obedience to God's Word? We're going to carry on now by looking at another passage in James that connects word with action. Let's look at this passage in James chapter 2, verses 14 to 26. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by my deeds. You believe that there is one God. Good. Even the demons believe that and shudder. You foolish person. Do you want evidence that faith without deeds is useless? Was not our father Abraham considered righteous for what he did when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see that his faith and his actions were working together, and his faith was made, by, made complete by what he did. And the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness, and he was called God's friend. You see that a person is considered righteous by what they do and not by faith alone. In the same way was not even Rahab the prostitute considered righteous for what she did, when she gave lodging to the spies and sent them off in a different direction. As the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without deeds is dead. As a church in the past, we've shared this quote from William Booth, the founder of the Salvation Army, who once said this, You cannot warm the hearts of people with God's love 
if they have an empty stomach and cold feet. And that really set the trajectory of the Salvation Army movement. Right from their beginnings, they believed that their faith and their deeds needed to be intertwined. That caring about people's eternities also needed to include being aware of their needs today. And we're not talking about securing your own salvation through deeds. In Ephesians 2, it states, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. But James is saying here, the kind of faith you have is important. You should have a living, dynamic faith. A faith that transforms you and regenerates you. A faith that is not only found in an intellectual and theoretical acceptance of an idea, but a faith securely found in a loving grace-filled, compassionate, and transformative God who then fills us with the love, grace, and compassion we need to live lives that will in turn bless others. This is very much connected to the first set of verses. How can you hear the word without doing what it says? And in the same way, how can you live a life of faith, how can you have faith without then living a life that shows evidence of that faith through what you do? Both the word of God and our faith in him should spur us on to do the things that he has asked us to do. Good deeds are the product of genuine life-giving faith. In Matthew chapter 22, Jesus tells a story about a man with two sons. The man went to the first son and asked him to go and work in the vineyard. At first the son says no, but then later changes his mind and goes to work. The father also goes to the second son and asks the same thing. This son says, yes, I will go, but didn't actually go. Jesus asked this question, which of the two did what his father wanted? Which one actually walked in obedience? The first one. So listen to the word and do what it says. Faith without deeds is dead. We need to hear and obey. These are some challenging verses in the book of James. Not so much challenging to understand, but challenging to live out in our day-to-day lives, which is, of course, the very point of these passages. But let's read our verses one more time. James 1, 22 to 25. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror And after looking at himself, goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. And James 2, verses 14 to 26. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds and I will show you my faith by my deeds. You believe that there is one God, good. Even the demons believe that and shudder. You foolish person, do you want evidence that faith without deeds is useless? Was not our father Abraham considered righteous for what he did when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see that his faith and his actions were working together and his faith was made complete by what he did. And the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. And he was called God's friend. You see that a person is considered righteous by what they do and not by faith alone. In the same way, was not even Rahab the prostitute considered righteous for what she did when she gave lodging to the spies and sent them off in a different direction? As the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without deeds is dead. I'd love to pray with you, and then you can continue to discuss and process these passages in your group. Let's pray. Lord, we give you all thanks and glory and honor today. Thank you, Jesus, that Through what you have done on the cross, salvation is available to us, not because of our own righteousness, not because of our own actions, not because of what we do, but because of what you have done. 
But Lord, too, we acknowledge that because of what you have done, because of the love and grace and compassion that you have given to us and you continue to give to us and you continue to fill us with, that we are now given the task of sharing that love, sharing that grace, showing that compassion to others. God, that as we believe in you, as we hear your word, as we have faith in you, so then we are spurred on to good works. We are spurred on to good deeds. We are spurred on to show love and compassion and grace to others. So God, we ask for your Holy Spirit to be with us, that you would empower us, you would give us wisdom, and you would give us the love and grace that we need to live out day to day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.